What is going on everybody? Welcome back to our channel Mexico Tech. You are watching series Wireless Sensors Networks. This is the second part of the series in which we are going to look at the requirements and the properties of Wireless Sensors Networks and the nodes inside the network, the sensors and the actuators. Proceeding with looking at the core components involved in a node block diagram. Then we will also look at what are the different interaction patterns of nodes within the network. So let's get started. Wireless sensors networks have their own major requirements. The first and the foremost important one is it should be a network should be failure resistant for any kind of failures either due to node running out of memory, running out of energy, physical distractions or communication issues. In any of these cases, the network should be robust enough and it should still be smart enough to find the routes to reach other nodes in a network. Scalability. It should support large number of nodes within a given network without compromising on any performance. Then we have unattended operations, that is a network that requires minimum user input to control and maintain itself. A network which is capable of adopting a change quickly and it should monitor and heal itself and it could also cooperate with new nodes etc. Remote upgrades. In case to adopt new technologies and infrastructure, new logarithms might be needed. Instead of physically going to the fields and reprogramming every single node, we should be doing it remotely on a single node which then populates the new source code to all other nodes securely. So a network should be simple enough to be maintained and also reproduce critical network error failures for fixing. Density, supporting large and or small number of nodes per area without compromising on any performance issues. Now let us look at the node requirements. So a node should have a limited CPU and memory, not more than required. It should have a reasonable storage. Some of them also comes with micro SD slots for logging of that data. Because of the small sizes of these nodes and deploying it over the network in a bulk requires us that the cost of individual nodes should be as low as possible. And yes, miniaturization, as I said earlier, that the size should be small enough. Basically, it should fulfill the requirement of the application and the use case. Then comes the reachability that defines the range of the transceivers. Basically, it all depends on the application needs that how far each node has been deployed from each other. Rechargeability, ability to recharge semi-gauge batteries itself through light, either vibration or at least a rechargeable unit, either from lithium ion batteries or solar panels, etc because the nodes in the network will initially be deployed and after that they will be kept unattended for a long time. So we need to make sure that they can charge themselves and keep them same alive. And lastly, to make the node live longer, it needs to have low power, including the processing and the transmission and reception. It should be at the lowest rate as possible. For that, the microcontrollers comes with the deep sleep mode as well where if no transmission or reception is done, the controller goes into deep sleep mode, which actually consumes much less power than required normally. So a comparison of two types of microcontrollers available in the market are 8-bit Atmega and 16-bit Texas MSP430. And the power consumptions, as you can see, for both of these microcontrollers in three different states are quite different and and keeping them in active state consumes much more power than as comparative to keeping them in the sleep mode state or deep sleep state. So now let us look at the node block diagram. The way in which a node reads and writes the data to and from the environment are by using two types of entities. The first one is the sensor, which actually sends the data from the environment and for all analog type of sensors, it needs an analog to digital converter as well. The second type of entity is the actuators, which allows the nodes to make the change in the physical environment. 
and similarly for all analog type of actuators we need a digital to analog converter the node then needs a chip that allows to communicate with other nodes it can be either Wi-Fi RF Zigbee or Bluetooth etc the brain of the node is where all the communication from these three components is gathered and sent back after processing the brain also needs a memory to store the states of the system this includes RAM ROM also the flash memory and lastly everything needs to be powered on and running for which a node requires a power unit the power unit needs to be recharged for which there needs to be a recharging unit for example we can have solar panels lithium oil batteries or AA batteries etc the way in which nodes interact with each other over a network may vary depending upon the application and the use case so we can have multiple in node interaction patterns in the network the first one can be detect and alert which is an event detection based so nodes locally detect an event maybe jointly with the nearby neighbors or independently and report these events to the interested sync nodes so a sync node can send periodic updates requests to get the health checks of all other nodes in a network or similarly the source nodes can send periodic updates to the sync nodes as well then we could also have functional aggregation type interaction patterns that is used by the census network to approximate the value of multiple nodes in a given space or time reachability and edge type of interaction patterns which can be helpful in finding out that which other nodes a given node can reach finding the edges or other structures in a network like like finding the boundary lines of the network etc we will study about all of these properties in upcoming videos of this course as well so don't worry if you don't understand anything till yet then we can have tracking and mobility type of interaction patterns where nodes can store the position of themselves and their neighbor mobile nodes or at least the node should know and store the last known position of the other neighboring nodes in the network then we could have routing protocols as I mentioned earlier like walking through the network to find out the best routes from the source to the sink and vice versa that is all for this video in the next one we are going to look at some real case examples and use cases of wireless sensors networks as well as we look at what are the core topics involved in wireless sensors network and also as always if you like this content please don't forget to like share and subscribe if you are new to this channel this is going to keep us motivated to bring such useful stuff to you guys in the future